Hi everyone, so today we're going to be having a look at living things and we have three main intentions for today. We want to distinguish between living and non-living things. We want to list the main characteristics of life and we want to finally define what is meant by an organism. So when we think of living things and compare them to things that aren't living, like let's say a rock or a book and so on, there are certain characteristics that will come to mind to let us know that something is living compared to something that's not living. And in general, we have seven characteristics and they're all listed on the right hand side. So living things are able to move, they can reproduce, they're sensitive, they can grow, they can respire, they can excrete, and they also need nutrition. So there's quite a few characteristics there that we need to remember. So if we take the first letter of each one of those, it will give us a way to remember it. And that's by remembering Mrs. Gren. So I always think the second word there, Gren kind of thinks or looks like a granny. So I think of an old person when I'm remembering that. So if you remember Mrs. Gren, you should be able to remember all of the characteristics of life. So we're going to go through each one of those characteristics one by one to find out what they actually mean for living things. So the first one we have is movement. And as we know, we can all move so we can walk from one place to another. If you think of other animals like fish, they can swim from one place to another and things like birds can fly from one place to another. So all animals are able to move. But it's important to remember too that plants are actually able to move as well. So if you have a look at plants, they'll always grow towards the sunlight. So in the diagram which we have over here on the right hand side, these plants here are beginning to bend towards the window because the sunlight is coming in the window. And that's always gonna happen for plants. So if we had our sun, and we had two plants underneath that, Both of those plants are going to bend in the direction of the sunlight. So this plant would bend this way and this plant would bend up this way. And all of that together is a plant response called phototropism. So even though it might not look like it, plants too can actually move, which means they're a living thing. So the second thing we have to have a look at then is reproduction. So all living organisms can make more of themselves by reproduction. So humans can reproduce by sexual reproduction and plants can reproduce by both sexual and asexual reproduction. So what we mean by asexual reproduction then is if we have a look at the strawberry plants up here in the right hand side, they actually produce what's called runners. And that's these structures here. So we have our main plant or our main strawberry plant, which is this one. It has produced these runners, which will extend to somewhere else in the soil like here and then another plant will actually start to form from those runners. So that's what we mean by asexual reproduction. The third one then is sensitivity, or we can also actually call this one response. So all living organisms or all living things react to what is going on around them. So as we've seen, plants react to light, but they can also react to gravity as well. So if we have a look at this plant over here, we all know of plants, the shoots will grow up and the roots will always grow down. So based off of this then, if we were to have a look at this plant over here, which is on its side, it's important to notice that the shoot of this plant is still growing upwards. And if we have a look at the roots, they've managed to move themselves so that they do begin to grow down. So even though the bottom of the pot is over here, it's gonna grow down to what was the side of the pot. And that's a growth response called geotropism. And that's a plant's growth response. To gravity. So it's similar to phototropism except it's reacting to gravity instead of light. So animals can react obviously too, so we react to things like touch and temperature. So if we have a look at this diagram up here, your initial reaction whenever you touch something hot is to pull your hand away to not cause harm to yourself. So that's the type of reaction that you would form as part of sensitivity. So the next thing which we have to look at is the idea of growth. So as we know, all living things can get bigger. So you would have started off as a baby and obviously grew into adult form or growing into adult forms. And throughout all of that, you're getting bigger. So it happens for both plants and it happens for humans as well. And this is all to do with cell division. So as we know from a cell, we can have one singular cell. And as a result of cell division, they'll reproduce or replicate their genetic material that's inside and eventually will start to form two cells. 
So now we have one cell beginning to split into two cells. They have genetic material in both. And eventually what will happen is it will fully cleave off and we'll be left with two different cells. Okay, so they'll be the exact same as the original cell. They'll have the exact same amount of genetic material. And this is called mitosis. The next one which we have to have a look at then is respiration. So all living things will have to release energy from their food. That's why we need our food. And how we actually do this is we use oxygen to help. So this is why we actually breathe. So if we have a look at the equation which we have down here, this sums up respiration for us. So we have glucose, which is found in our food, plus oxygen, which we breathe in. We react and result in carbon dioxide and water and energy, which is ideally what we want from our food. So we have to have a look at excretion now. So all living organisms will produce waste and excretion involves getting rid of this waste. So we can excrete things like carbon dioxide when we breathe out, and we can also excrete things like water when we sweat and through urine and so on as well. And the final thing which we have to have a look at then is the idea of nutrition. So all living organisms need food to get energy. So animals can get their food by eating other plants and by eating other animals. So if we have a look at this diagram down here, we're probably used to the different types of diets we can have. So we can get our food either plant-based or we can have a mixture of plant-based and animal-based by eating meat. But plants actually have to make their own food in a process called photosynthesis. So in photosynthesis, the plants will use the sunlight to produce their own food, which is here in the form of carbohydrates. So plants are autotrophs because they make their own food and they use the sun in a process called photosynthesis. So a summary then of all the living things, in order for something to be classified as living, it has to have all seven characteristics. So a living thing then, if it has all seven of those, will be called an organism. And what's really important is that even if it's missing just one of the seven characteristics, it cannot be a living thing. So even if it has six out of the seven characteristics, it cannot be living and it would therefore be a non-living thing. So examples of non-living things which you would have would be things like a bike, we have a toy car there or a real car, we have a table and we have a doll. So it might have some of the characteristics of life. So for example, the bike can move, the car can move, but it doesn't have all seven so it cannot be a living thing. So just to summarize then our intentions for today, we wanted to be able to distinguish between living and non-living things. We wanted to list the characteristics of life. So we now know that there's seven of them and we want to define what is meant by an organism. And we now know that that's a living thing.